And with Afghanistan and the dramatic fall of the capital, just today, President Biden sending more troops, a total of 6,000 now, to speed up the emergency evacuation of embassy staff and some Afghans who helped the U.S., such as interpreters and their families. The White House releasing this photo of the president being briefed on the developments on the ground. Helicopters and black smoke visible. American diplomats, including the ambassador, evacuated to the airport. At least 500 staff leaving the country so far. The embassy shuttered, the flag coming down. Secretary of State Blinken declaring to ABC's Jonathan Carl, this is manifestly not Saigon. These images from Al Jazeera claim to show Taliban fighters inside the presidential palace. Earlier today, the president of Afghanistan fled the country, saying he chose to avoid bloodshed. Thousands of Afghans now scrambling to get out. The Kabul airport packed earlier today. We have team coverage. ABC's Martha Raddatz, Rachel Scott standing by. But we begin with our senior foreign correspondent, Ian Panel, who leads us off tonight from Kabul. Tonight, the Taliban taking Kabul, Afghanistan's capital and last government stronghold. This footage from Al Jazeera purporting to show Taliban fighters inside the presidential palace declaring the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, marking the end of a 20-year experiment of democracy and the stunning completion of the militants' dramatic takeover, seizing nearly all of the country in just over a week. Earlier, there were skirmishes and panic at the city's airport. The Afghan president, Ashraf Ghani, fleeing as the Taliban closed in, saying in a Facebook message he wanted to save Kabul from bloodshed. Smoke rising over the U.S. embassy, Chinook helicopters taking off, evacuating U.S. personnel from the country and eerily reminiscent of the fall of Saigon. This is manifestly not Saigon. The fact of the matter is this. We went to Afghanistan 20 years ago uh, with one mission in mind, and that was to deal with the people who attacked us on 9-11. Uh, and that mission has been successful. The Biden administration defending the U.S. withdrawal from the country, but clearly caught off guard by the Taliban's rapid advance. Just today, President Biden sending more troops, a total of 6,000 to hasten the emergency evacuation of the embassy and some Afghan visa applicants. Today, the flag removed, the doors shuttered, the U.S. ambassador and all operations transferred to the airport for safety. Embassy staff told to destroy sensitive equipment and documents, especially those containing images of the American flag that could be used as propaganda. And on the streets of Kabul, fear and despair. Long lines as residents scramble to withdraw their life savings, many saying the banks simply running out of cash. And a desperate crush at the Pakistan border crossing as people try to flee. And chaos at the airport as thousands of Afghans desperate to get out. Just five weeks ago, this was President Biden, adamant that what we witnessed today wouldn't happen. The likelihood there's going to be the Taliban overrunning everything and owning the whole country is highly unlikely. But tonight, the worst predictions for Afghanistan's future coming true. In less than three months, the Taliban capturing control of nearly every major district outside Kabul. Just this morning, taking the city of Jalalabad before advancing on the capital. This video released by the Taliban claiming to show their forces being cheered by residents in the streets. And now the women, and especially the girls of Afghanistan, who've grown up in a country where they have freedom and rights, fearing all of that will be stripped away. This displaced school teacher says she watched girls being lashed by the Taliban just for wearing sandals. Yet Miriam here, still defiant. I'm not afraid of them. We are not the people who will, you know, go back to the dark era. I'm a girl and I don't care about anyone. But what should I be scared of? This is my homeland, my land. Her land, this country, now under Taliban rule. After 20 years of war, costing trillions of dollars and tens of thousands of lives. Tonight, so many questioning, what was this all for? And what will the future hold? General McKenzie, the head of U.S. Central Command, met with the Taliban in Doha today, telling them not to interfere with the U.S. mission at the airport, warning that the U.S. has the firepower to defend themselves while they work round the clock to get everyone out. 
Lindsay? So much urgency as well as uncertainty. Ian, thank you. I want to bring in ABC's congressional correspondent, Rachel Scott. Now, Rachel, as you know, President Biden at Camp David this weekend, receiving a lot of criticism and backlash for the way this crisis is unfolding. Is there any expectation that he might return to Washington ahead of schedule? Lindsay, as of right now, no plans for the president to return back to Washington early. We know that he has been receiving regular briefings at Camp David, but he is facing growing pressure to address this to the American people. People. Republicans are calling this an unmitigated disaster. I'm told that members of the House and the Senate were briefed on a private phone call by senior administration officials earlier this morning. Some members outraged Republican leader Kevin McCarthy calling this an embarrassment to our nation. But President Biden has remained firm on this. He says he inherited this situation and he says he made the choice not to pass it on to a fifth administration, Lindsay. Rachel Scott, our thanks to you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for We begin tonight with the stunning collapse in Afghanistan. Late today, for the first time, President Biden addressing the American people, saying, I stand squarely behind my decision, but saying the truth is this did unfold more quickly than we anticipated, saying Afghan leaders gave up, that the Afghan military collapsed. But tonight, major questions about how U.S. intelligence, how the president's national security team did not see this coming. The Taliban in control of Kabul. It was sweeping and swift, taking a little more than a week to seize several large cities and the country. Thousands of Afghans desperate to get out, some seen chasing a U.S. military plane, a C-17, as it was taxiing for takeoff, climbing onto the plane. There are reports tonight several people fell from the plane and that some did not survive. Thousands more running toward the airport amid gunfire, and tonight the Taliban now in control of the only road in. This family scaling the wall, climbing around barbed wire, pulling up a little girl with her backpack. Taliban fighters are now patrolling the streets of the capital and in control in the presidential palace after Afghanistan's president fled the country. President Biden before the camera saying he is deeply saddened by the facts on the ground, the images the world now seeing, but saying, I do not regret my decision asking how many more American lives and adding, I will not repeat the mistakes made in the past, saying the events unfolding reinforce it was time to get out and adding that Americans should not be fighting a war that the Afghans, he says, aren't willing to fight themselves. But there remain so many questions tonight. The U.S. military working throughout the day today to secure the airport. Tonight, the scene there at the airport and the U.S. now promising to get tens of thousands out of that country. Our senior foreign correspondent, Ian Panel, leading us off tonight from Kabul. Tonight, the panic, chaos and desperation at the Kabul airport, then forced to shut down. Thousands of Afghans crowding onto the runway, surrounding this massive C-17 military jet, some clinging to the side of the fuselage. Horrifying local reports saying people could be seen falling from the plane as it took off. The despair at the airport, overwhelming. Throngs of people swarming up the walkway, trying to board one flight. Forcing themselves inside another, the pilots unable to take off in the chaos. This disturbing video even showing a child being pulled aboard, hanging by that rope. This image obtained by Defence One showing hundreds of people packed inside one plane. Barbed wire separating the airport from the desperate masses stranded outside. Dozens climbing the walls onto the airfield. At least seven people killed in the chaos. At one point, gunfire erupting on the tarmac. Officials confirming U.S. troops shot and killed at least two armed men as thousands streamed onto the runway and at least one U.S. military service member injured. U.S. troops forced to hold their ground at gunpoint. The Taliban announcing they're now in full control. 20 years of American and NATO-led gains collapsing in stunning fashion in just a matter of days. Armed checkpoints around the city, the Taliban now separating foreigners from locals. Militants seizing control of the main route to the airport, only allowing foreigners through. Just five weeks ago, the president was adamant that a complete Taliban takeover was unlikely. The likelihood there's going to be the Taliban overrunning everything and owning the whole country is highly unlikely. But under growing pressure to address the unfolding crisis, President Biden today saying he stands by his decision. I stand squarely behind my decision. After 20 years 
I've learned the hard way that there was never a good time to withdraw U.S. forces. The truth is, this did unfold more quickly than we had anticipated. And on the images now seen around the world, Afghans holding on to that C-17, scaling the airport walls, the president acknowledged how difficult it is to watch. I am president of the United States of America, and the buck stops with me. I'm deeply saddened by the facts we now face, but I do not regret my decision. American troops cannot and should not be fighting in a war and dying in a war that Afghan forces are not willing to fight for themselves. And this is the new reality tonight. Images from Al Jazeera seen around the world showing Taliban fighters inside the presidential palace, triumphantly declaring the restoration of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. The militants sweeping through major cities in a week. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani, likely in an effort to save his own life, fleeing the country he vowed to protect, claiming in a Facebook post he wanted to save Kabul from bloodshed. Tonight, the president signing off on deploying at least 6,000 troops to the region, assisting the emergency evacuation of almost all U.S. personnel, American citizens, and thousands of Afghans who supported the U.S.-led mission. For a time, black smoke seen rising from the U.S. Embassy. Embassy staffers ordered to destroy sensitive equipment and documents, especially those containing images of the American flag that could be used as propaganda. The Taliban are out in force. You see them at different checkpoints around the city. But we've been driving for five minutes, and what's really noticeable is we haven't seen one woman out on the streets. But tonight, already chilling new reports of mounting human rights abuses against women and girls. Many concerned the freedoms gained over the last 20 years in education and the workplace now in jeopardy. We visited this school for girls in April. My wish is to raise the woman voice. What really I want is to be a very uh, well-known journalist. I will go for an interview in front of the boss. And if he asks me that, uh, what is the main reason, what is the main wish that you hear? I would tell him that I want to sit in that chair that right now you're sitting. I really want that. But tonight, in a country where women leaders have only just been welcomed, they now fear for their lives. For sure, I'm afraid of myself, my life, and my, my freedom to work and my freedom to speak up. These are the things that I'm afraid, afraid of losing them. And these are very real fears tonight. Ian with us from Kabul again this evening. And Ian, I wanted to go back to these evacuations now planned uh, at the airport. We know there's only one main road to the airport. The U.S. says it's prepared to transport uh, 30,000 people out of the country, American personnel and Afghans who helped the United States. But how do you get these thousands of people past Taliban checkpoints? Uh, can this be done safely? And what is the status of the airport tonight? Yeah, David, at the moment, I can't say I see a workable plan at all. Many of those who risk their lives to help us are simply afraid to go out of their houses. And even if they do, there's one road into the airport, there's a Taliban checkpoint there, and they're only letting foreigners through. Meanwhile, we can hear those planes back in the sky. The airport has reopened, but this is still far from over. David. All right, Ian Panel leading us off from Kabul. He said he can hear the planes back in the sky tonight. Ian, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for overseas tonight in the worsening situation at this hour in Afghanistan. Taliban fighters now claiming nine key cities tonight. Take a look at this map showing provinces held by the Taliban. This was in April when President Biden first announced the U.S. troop withdrawal. And this is what the Taliban holds today. Almost two thirds of the country now. Here's our senior foreign correspondent Ian Panel tonight. Tonight, the escalating crisis in Afghanistan as the Taliban captures a ninth major city, gradually closing in on their crown jewel, the capital, Kabul. A U.S. official confirms that a military assessment suggests the capital could fall in 90 days. In the western city of Farah, Taliban fighters patrolling the streets victorious. The white flag of the Taliban hoisted high over another of their latest victories, the provincial capital of Poly Khumri. That video and ones like these released by the Taliban themselves claiming to show their growing arsenal. 
a helicopter left behind by retreating government forces and a treasure trove of Humvees and heavy equipment at a former army base now under their command. Are Stephanie Ramos asking the president about the Taliban's rapid gains? There is irrefutable evidence that a vast majority of those Afghan forces cannot hold ground there. Has your current plan to withdraw U.S. troops changed at all? They've got to fight for themselves, fight for their nation. We're going to continue to keep our commitment, but I do not regret my decision. Almost all U.S. troops have now left the country, bar 650 were there to protect the embassy and the airport, but clearly, as the Taliban advance, everything is under review. David. All right, Ian Panel, our senior foreign correspondent. Ian, thank you. And Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here.